Shalom, kings and queens, shalom. I'm just coming to you with another video, short but detailed lesson. Uh, I just want to say happy Sabbath to everybody. Hope everybody having a great day and a great Sabbath, a great week. I'm thanking the Most High God for another Sabbath for allowing us to see it. Um, you still don't have understanding on that? Please look into it. Uh, get some understanding on what the Sabbath is. It's one of the Most High God's highest holy days. Understand that for us every week. It's 52 Sabbaths in a year. Understand that. Um, so if you're not following my, uh, Lost Sheep page, uh, you can be added to it if you like. Um, I, uh, that's the page I use for my business page that I, uh, teach on it. And I, uh, also, uh, use for merchandise, any type of merchandise that I have that you may like, you can purchase. Uh, I got Tunnel Vision Films on YouTube. My channel, you can, uh, log on to and you can get full videos there if you like. But I'm just coming for a but short but detail understand, like I said, raising awareness. So this video here is the last video I'm going to do for uh, Let's Play Connect the Dots. If you didn't catch the first three videos I did on it, you can catch it, like I said, on Tunnel Vision Films, or you can catch it down on my Lost Sheep page on Facebook. But this is the fourth video here. It's called Let's uh, Play Connect the Dots. Now, I choose that title because uh, we're in a time where, the mo uh, where, excuse me, where scriptures tell you that people will be running to and fro with no understanding. People will be being tossed to and fro and uh, running around with no understanding. Trying to get understandable won't be able to get it. You understand? So we're in a time where also to understand that the most I say that when the prophets speak, you know what I'm saying? It would be like wind to uh to the people. It'd be like wind to their ears because every time somebody tell you something when it's involving the truth or something you don't understand, we fear it and we run from it. We fear the things that we don't know and the things that we don't understand. So understand this. Before the most high God destroy any uh empire. He always sent prophets and teachers. He sent prophets and teachers to warn the people. You understand? He sent prophets and teachers to warn the people. So understand this. Stop ignoring what the Most High God may be sending your way or sending someone your way to bring you understanding that could possibly wake you up or save your soul. Understand that. It tell you in Romans 10 and 13. How can you be taught if he don't send you a teacher? You understand? So the Most High will use somebody that you don't think is educated that's next to you or the lowest so that you will get the understanding and so that you will know this the most high God working through him. You understand? You study sitting in position looking for a pastor or someone of this uh, stature or status to bring forth you understanding or show you who you are, who God is and who the Christ is. But they're not going to be able to do that. Why? Because you can't put a person in school and get them a Bible and say, here, go teach. You can't go to school to learn and to teach about the Most High God. You understand why? Because you have to be called to do this. It's the difference in being called to do something by the Most High. You have to have the spirit of the Most High and the spirit of wisdom and understanding and Christ with you. You know what I'm saying? For this walk. You have to divide, you divide the word of truth is what I'm saying. Nobody's rightly dividing the word of truth in these uh, churches that's under 501c3. Understand that. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is this. We had to stop running from things. Like our brother Paul said, do I become your enemy now because I tell you the truth? Understand that. You should love a person for telling you the truth. I don't understand how a person can tell you the truth or give you some understanding and you do nothing but weigh it as if it's just another opinion. Like I told you, I said in scripture to tell you that when a prophet speak in these days, it's going to be like wind to the people. It's going to be like wind to their ears. They're not even going to, you understand, but not even knowing that a person is telling you something that they possibly putting their life on the line for. You know what I'm saying? And things of this nature. But understand this as well. It also tell you in scripture that so what if some don't believe? So what if you don't believe anything that I'm saying or anything that's going on in this world considering pro concerning prophecy, excuse me, or concerning that's written in scripture? Just because you don't know it or don't believe it's true doesn't mean it's true. It tell you in scripture that just because you don't believe or so what if some don't believe that that make the word of God void? Do that mean his prophecies, his prophecies are not going to come uh, be fulfilled? His prophecies are already being fulfilled as we speak. You understand? We just don't know the scriptures because like I told you, we never was taught that Bible. We learned it from our enemies and our oppressor. You understand? We never learned it. They taught us a doctrine. They used doctrine to, see, to deceive us. You understand? A person can have a Bible open to teach you what they want based off their opinions and their ideologies. Just because the Bible open don't mean they teach you the Bible. And that's why you can't get the truth or get this understanding I'm trying to bring forth here. In these churches because they're not going to teach you that. You know what I'm saying? They'd rather preach two hours off their head and then read you a few scriptures. But where did you get Bible understanding that? You got to understand when Christ was taking the, into, uh, the, excuse me, the disciples into the temple, 
You know what I'm saying? They was getting Bible understanding. Whenever the Bible's in place, you're supposed to get Bible understanding. Understand that. So I said all that to say this. The scriptures tell you, prove all things and hold fast to which is good. That's Thessalonians 5 and 21. Prove all things and hold fast to which is good. So I'm going to prove like I always um, come forth with understanding through the scripture and the word and prove what I'm uh, bringing forth. But you need to hold fast to it because it's good. Why? Because this can instant liberate you. What liberates us? The truth. The truth is the keys we need to unlock us from our mental prison. We are ment we are still mentally enslaved. We're not slaves physically and in shackles and chains, but we have shackles and shackles and chains, excuse me, on our mind. And that's the worst thing. Why? Because the great what is the devil's greatest tool? Psychology. Psychology is the devil's greatest tool that he used to deceive us. And it's still working to this day. No different than a Willie Lynch letter. He said he, he predicted that would work within our people. And it's still working to this day. Psychology. You understand? So now let's talk about this voting. Voting is one thing that we do not need to uh, waste no more time on. Understand this. I never voted. You understand? I never voted. I never voted. And that was organically. You understand? Before I even had the truth and understand how things work. So I'm letting you know that I never voted because I know that the Democrats and the Republicans, they are just birds of the same feather. Same bird, you know what I'm saying? That a, that, that a bird, they are uh, two different uh, campaigns, but two birds of the same feather with the same agenda, basically. Just a left, right paradigm, you know what I'm saying? With the same agenda. So they do things like that. You know what I'm saying? They have different organizations and companies or different campaigns or they play a Republican and de Democrat, for example, you know what I'm saying? But it, they have the same agenda. Presidents never matter. You got to understand this, first of all. Anytime they will lie to you and tell you that the first black, uh, president was, uh, <laughs> excuse me, anytime they tell you that the first uh, president was uh, George Washington or whatever, you have to understand this. Excuse me, you have to understand this. If they tell you that the first president was George Washington, why would you even deal with anything got to do with presidency? Knowing that that's a lie right there, or maybe you don't know. You understand? If you know that the first uh, eight presidents was black, why would you do anything? Um, um, waste your time voting in the system where somebody would lie to you and make you think that uh, that they was not. You understand? You're dealing with the same people who's lying to you and deceiving you, and the same people that's doing this are our enemies and our oppressors. You understand? We had eight presidents, and the first eight presidents were black. I showed you this in my other uh, Connect the Dots video. So understand what who we dealing with, what type of people we dealing with. You understand? They deal with deception at its highest level. The devil, you forget the devil was is, was a great musician. You know what I'm saying? So he loved deceiving us and, and psyching the people. But how do you hide the truth, though? You put it in plain sight. What I just said was the first eight black presidents, you know, I mean, the first eight presidents was black, right? So the first black president is in the back of the $2 bill. I showed you this. You can look in the uh, $2 bill and, and, and see that the first president is on the back of this bill. You see what I'm saying? So how do you have the truth? You put it in plain sight. Why? Because our people still not going to get it. You understand? Because we don't seek the truth. We don't seek the truth. Like it tell you in scriptures, Esau seek of a sign. Jacob seek, Jacob seek of a sign. Excuse me. Esau seek of a wisdom. That means that I'm from the seed of Jacob. The children and the descendants of Jacob within the earth, the 12 tribe. We don't seek knowledge and understanding and wisdom like I'm trying to give you now. We seek a sign. We like to see things in order to believe. We like to touch it and still don't believe sometimes. But like I told you, just because you don't believe don't mean it's not true. So understand this. We dealing with a, a type of uh, people where even the White House, the, the the view of the White House from the top of it is shaped in an owl. When you look at it, it's shaped in an owl, in an owl face. And that's why you had that same owl on your dollar bill in the corner where I got it circled right here. And I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see it. But it's an owl at the tip of this dollar um, bill up here about a dollar. And that's why so many symbols on this dollar bill that it had never changed because it points back to the same people I'm speaking of. So why vote in their uh, system? You got to understand what they're dealing with. They deal with symbolism. Symbolism is very important to them because they hide things in symbols. You understand? Sometimes you can deal with double symbol sim symbolism as well, excuse me, because it can have two different meanings. You understand? Same thing with the ego on this side. Why do you think the ego is over there? I'm going to read you a scripture because you can read that in scripture where it tell you about the ego. And I'm going to tell you who that is if you don't know, because this is how you connect the dots and link in to who these people are. But why deal with their campaigns or why vote or why even uh, waste your time with it? I'm trying to say here. 
when you go into the book of Obadiah in the Bible, it tells you that um, they would exalt thyself as the eagle. Read Obadiah chapter uh, 1 through uh, 4. And it tells you that they would exalt thyself as the eagle. You understand? And thence when they set their uh, they habitation amongst the stars, it says, thence when I bring thee down. You understand? So it's telling you who they are and what they represent or what they go by. The eagle. Any way you see the eagle emblem like on our uh, patches, like on in, in a certain the military and all these things of that nature, they use the eagle as they symbol. That's why you can't do nothing to an eagle in this world without nothing happening behind it. Now, I'm going to give you some worldly understanding to connect these dots with what I'm saying. It's a paper here that you can read in Good Morning America. This happened July 11, 2017. It say a Virginia man pleads guilty to killing a bald eagle by shooting it and running it over with the ATV. This is the article right here. Now, if you see this article and you have the understanding that, hmm, okay, why would they go to these measures to do something to somebody behind shooting or running over an eagle? That's because they don't play behind these eagles because they exalt themselves as the eagle. It just, I just read it to you in scripture. It tell you that the Virginia man faces up to a year in prison and a hundred thousand dollar fine after he pleaded guilty to killing a bald eagle today. First by shooting a bird of prey, then running it over with the all terrain vehicle. The U.S. Department of Justice said in a statement. This is the whole article right here. I printed it off. You can go online and get this. You see what I'm saying? But I just want to show you how they operate and the things they deal with and the people we're dealing with because it's all connected to presidency and campaign. Why deal with voting? I never voted. But see, people think I'm crazy when I tell them don't vote. You understand? That sounds foreign to our people because they figure like voting is the way. So let me go even a little deeper with it. How do you think voting counts when Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, all these great leaders we had coming through uh, slavery times and coming through history, we still in the same condition? What is the cry right now? I heard Farrakhan say it before. He said the cry is still the same thing. He said it's jobs, justice, and equality. Ain't we still fighting for those same things and we still don't have those rights? So why keep dealing with these people? Why do you think your vote count? It don't count. It never matter. A president is nothing but a puppet. The real power surrounding power is the power. Understand that. A, pup, a, a president is nothing but a puppet. Has no power at all. You looking for a president to change our conditions when no man can save us out of these conditions. Christ's job is to come save us out of these conditions. That's Christ's mission, excuse me. No man in walking this earth is going to be able to save. It. That's why it tell us in Deuteronomy 28 when we, it said that we would come over here about a way of slave cargo ships, that no man will be able to redeem you or save you. Meaning no man can buy us or save us out of these conditions. What we're going through in this world, we're meant to go through it. Why? Because it was prophesied that we go through this. Why? Because we're fought, we're, we're, we're um, suffering the curses that our, that our uh, ancestors for following lesser gods and uh, following the ways of the heathen. And because of that, we're their children, so we're suffering the curses. We're suffering the curses. It tell you in Genesis 49 that when their fathers pass away, they will have all the children sitting around them in front of the bed and they will tell them what will befall them in the last days. So he let us know, Jacob, our father, who gave birth to the 12 tribes, that what we will go through in the earth in these last days. We are suffering those curses. Look around. So I'm telling you, if you know that we're suffering curses that's written up in scripture, why do you think a president or anybody walking this earth can come save us out of these conditions? No. We had to go through this because Christ went through it. Christ came down here and went through it and died for a nation and died for our sins. He didn't have no sins or no flaw in him. So how do you think we're not supposed to go through anything? You think we just going to skip, skip, uh, you know, through the tulips and the trees and hold hands with Christ when he come back and we just going to go to heaven? It's not that simple and not that easy. But it's a shame that that's the understanding that most Christians have and that they teach it in these churches. You understand? It's not going to happen that way. Christ coming back to get his garment dirty. You got to understand he coming back for war. But you have to understand that that's the thing that they use to deceive us and make us think, like I say, that a president, somebody like a president can change our conditions and they cannot. Just look at your timeline and history. Look how many presidents it's been and we're still in the same conditions. You understand? So it's still no jobs and still no peace. And I'm going to end it with this. We are following the wrong people like this. Presidents, government, anything of this nature. We are not supposed to be dealing with these people on the level that we deal with them and putting our trust and hope in these people, I'm saying. Why? It tell you alone in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12, and you can read this as a precept in another scripture in Psalm 62 and 10. But it tell you that because ye despise the word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay therein, you got to understand the scriptures telling you that we trust in oppression. So I understand why we do 
what we do on this level when it comes to these type of things. Because the Bible alone tells you that our people trust in oppression. Michael Mech said it the best. He said, how can we trust our enemies and our oppressors to teach our children? Only a fool would do that. That's why we're dealing with the foolish nation of people in this world. The wisdom and knowledge of this world tell you in scripture is foolishness with the most high. We don't even know that we are uh, dealing with our enemies and our oppressors. Why do you think that Martin Luther King walk didn't uh, go through uh, as planned or wasn't an impact or that he did anything or had no effect to change our conditions or situations in this world? Because he ushered us right back into the hands of the oppressors, our oppressors. We was never supposed to integrate. Understand that. It was supposed to stay the way it was. We was never supposed to integrate, put us back in the hands of our oppressors. You understand? And that was not our mission. You have to wake up and understand our purpose. First, find out who you are. Once you find out who you are, then you understand uh, what's your reason for fighting and fighting on the right side of this thing. And then that's just the beginning of understanding of who you are, just knowing who you are. That don't mean that you're going to still be able to um, walk through the um, through the uh, pearly gates just because, you know what I'm saying, you know who you are. That's just the beginning of understanding of who you are. But it's deeper than that. It's a deeper truth and understanding we must receive than that. You have to get an understanding of Christ in this aspect. And read about him, I'm sorry, from a human aspect and understand his walk because that's the way. If you don't do it Christ's way and like Christ did, he came as an example to show us a way back to the Father. That's why I tell you in John that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. Understand that. So no man can say what's out of his condition. Voting don't count. You can go get a book too called The Faith of the Founding Fathers. You can look in one of my uh, YouTube channel and you can look for a video I put on there about this book and get more understanding on it. But even this book alone lets you know. This book alone lets you know what faith that our first uh, four presidents of this world was dealing with and what practices they were dealing with and customs as far as religion and things of that nature that they brought over here to the world when this world was written, the new world, which is America. You understand? So you have to get this book and get understanding on it, understanding what we're dealing with. 13 Illuminati signed our uh, our Declaration of Independence. And that's right here on the back of your $2 bill, too, as well. Right here. 13 Illuminati. So you got to understand what we're dealing with. And that was in 1776. You got to understand what we're dealing with, what kind of people we're dealing with here. Wake up and get some understanding. Peace and blessings. Stay tuned for part two. Shalom. So I'm going to give you two more... Uh, Two more things that you can connect the dots with, you understand, that will give you understanding on why it is, on why it is that you should not be dealing with anything as far as, far as um, voting or anything of this nature. You know what I'm saying? This is what this is about. I'm giving you all the understanding on how you connect your dots on uh, how, uh, why or why, why or why you should not vote. You understand? So when it comes to this, understand this. Anytime you're dealing with this president, the uh, the presidential campaign in the election and voting and things of that nature. Why deal with these people? Why deal with the people that will put up a statue or erect a statue outside of the White House of a guy named Albert Pike? And I understand Albert Pike is a guy who started the uh, KKK. This is a thirty three degree Mason, actually a son of Satan. Why this guy uh predicted three uh world wars way back in August, I think fifteenth of uh in the eighteen hundreds. What you can do is you can look up online. You can look up one of his memoirs. It's called uh, Dog and Morals, Morals and Dogma. You can look this up and read it, and, and you'll get all this understanding and more information, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, about Albert Pike and his origins. Get understanding on that. What kind of people are we dealing with that would put a statue of this man outside of the White House? He never ran for president. He don't have anything to do with presidency, but you have to know, you know what I'm saying, how much power did he have? That's, your, that's what it should make you ask yourself. How much power did he have to have this statue out here? You know what I'm saying? And what it represents. Understand. So you have to look at you have to look at uh you have to look at something else here that I want to show you as far as the key piece where you can connect your dots and understand what we're dealing with or what type of people we're dealing with when it comes to the president, when it comes to voting, when it comes to the government. Understand that. Understand this. If you don't know, look into it. You can Google this. You can look it up. You can go visit this thing. It's called the Georgia Guidestones. This right here is very important and key as well. The Georgia Guidestones are at 1031 Guidestones Road in Albert, Alberton, Georgia. And the zip code there is 30635. Now, that's the location of the Georgia Guidestones. Now, what the Georgia Guidestones is. When you look it up, it tell you the Georgia Guidestones are a granite, uh, uh, granite monument erected in 1980 in Albert County, Georgia. 
in the United States. A set of uh, 10 guidelines is inscribed on the structure in eight modern languages, and a shorter message is inscribed at the top of the structure in four ancient languages script. So it's letting you know that this thing is broke down in eight different languages. You have English, you have Spanish, Swahili, Hindu, you have Hebrew, Aramaic, you have Chinese, Russian, and at the, and, and but this is what's key about this Georgia Guidestone. You understand? You have to understand why that's there. What kind of statement they trying to make by putting this thing there. And we'll put it up and nobody is doing anything about it. But you have to understand why they put it there. Now, this thing, basically what it is, is their set of uh, laws that we're supposed to follow are going to have to follow within the new world when they do this new world order thing to come. You understand? But that's going against what the most high God laws is in the Bible. We are supposed to follow the most high God laws excuse me, the most high God laws in this Bible. Not on no Georgia Guidestones, but they want us to drive to Georgia and they put this thing up so we can read their laws. So I'm just going to give you the first one. I'm not going to go over all of them. I'm going to give you the first one that's on there. The first one on their law, it said, the first uh, law that's on this Georgia Guidestones, I'm sorry, it says maintain humanity under 500 million and perpetuate balance with nature. So that means that some people are going to die, and that means that they're the ones who are going to decide who those people are going to be. Keep humanity under 500 million. That right there lets you know what type of people we're dealing with and lets you know that they were going to destroy us and do these things that they're doing to us. You understand? Wake up and get some understanding. Shalom.